I can't do this. I don't have the experience. I'm not smart enough. I don't have the money. I don't have the time. I don't know where to start. Have any of you ever felt this way? Well, as entrepreneurs, these are often the things that we tell ourselves. And what is that? Oh, what is that? Let's find out, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> That's fear. And what is fear? Fear is the thief of opportunity. Fear is the thief of success. As entrepreneurs, fear is a constant for us. Those big ideas that we have, they can feel overwhelming. They can feel like a mountain that we're trying to climb. They can feel like an elephant that we're trying to devour. I've come to learn that we can't eat an elephant in just one bite. But as entrepreneurs, we often only see elephants on the menu. And believe me, I've had one or two on my plate. So the question is, how do you eat an elephant. Let me tell you about one of my first elephants. I've told this story a few times lately. I've done a few podcasts lately, and I've told this story. And every time I tell it, I get a similar reaction. The look of disbelief, the shaking of the heads, and I feel the fear that I felt all over again. I'll never forget it. The fear, the feeling, of fear, but the feeling of holding keys to a building in my hand, a building that I just purchased. My husband and I had not been married a year. We didn't even own our own home yet, our first home, but we just bought a building. That's when I knew that he really loved me. <laughs> I just closed on the building. We just signed the paperwork a few hours before, and my business partner, with whom I was opening a bridal store, chickened out. She decided that this dream of opening a bridal store was my dream, not hers. Fear got the best of her. So I was left with two servings of it, hers and mine. So here I was with a business plan, a building, and no business partner. And fear got the best of me. It paralyzed me for five years. I've been in business now for 15 years, and in my own space, in my own way, I've been successful. But it took me five years from the moment that I purchased that building to the moment that I sold my first wedding gown in it. That's how long I, look, I allowed fear to take hold of me. Throughout my career, this has been my process for most major decisions. It's reflected up here in a text conversation with my husband, Mark, who is my biggest confidant um, and tends to get the brunt of all of the thoughts that go running through my head. So it goes something like this. I get an idea or I'm faced with an opportunity and I'm so excited. I think of all of the possibilities where it can lead. And then the fear starts to creep in. And then I think of the project as a whole, and I start to get overwhelmed. I start to have doubt, and I start to think, I'm not good enough for this. I can't do this. I'm going to fail. Does this sound familiar to anybody? As the youngest vice president of merchandising, let me go back, sorry. This clicker is giving me trouble. Um, sorry, guys. You're getting my whole presentation before I'm even done. <laughs> Gosh. Well, I was afraid of this happening, and here it is. 
So let, let, this be, let this be part of my, anybody good at this? There we go. No? There we go, we getting there? All right, thanks guys. Okay, all right, here we go. Well, this is a good example. <laughs> so I've learned to be comfortable with my fear. Can you tell? Yeah. I've learned not to resist it, but instead to let it guide me. I've learned to lean into my fear, and it never fails to teach me a lesson, like to practice with the clicker before you come up here. <laughs> I actually think somehow you guys have all become comfortable with your fear too, otherwise you wouldn't be sitting here in these chairs running your successful businesses. So I'm gonna share with you, which you just got a sneak peek at some of them, the five lessons that fear has taught me. As the youngest vice president of merchandising for Ann Taylor, I was in a really good place. I was under 30, I was working in New York City, and I was making in the high six figures. And life was really good. Except it wasn't. I was a young mother. I was expecting for the second time. In the back of my mind, I still had this dream to open a bridal store. But there was no room for my dream because of my busy career. And let's face it, since my breakup with my partner five years before, I was still scared. Like a soundtrack running through my brain were also all of those old thoughts. I, don't, I can't do this alone. I don't have the experience to open a bridal store. I can't say no to my safe job, and I certainly could not walk away from all of that money. And trust me, all of those were valid reasons, but inside I wasn't happy, and I knew that I was giving my best years to someone else's company. So the, the change happened as I allowed myself to turn the dream into a plan and slowly my plan into action. My dream eventually got stronger than my fear and I said yes. Was I scared? Hell yeah, I was. But I got to the point where I was more scared of not pursuing my dream. So. When my daughter, Lindsay, was three and my son, Mark, was six months old, I finally opened the white dress by the shore. Oh, good Lord. Has anyone ever felt not good enough or not experienced enough for an opportunity? Or maybe you're really confident in your business, but then that one opportunity comes along and you're like, oh my God, this one job comes along and you're like, do I have enough experience to do this? Can I really do this? Well, I've been there. Imagine being the bridal stylist for Martha Stewart's niece, and the wedding is at Martha's house. One of the things I'm 100% confident in is not a clicker, but <laughs> in bridal fashion. That's one thing that I never, or should I say rarely, doubt. When this picture was taken, I'd been dressing brides for years through my bridal boutique, but this was only my second day of wedding dressing service since I'd have finch officially launched my company, Beth Chapman Styling. And it was for Martha freaking Stewart's niece <laughs> at Martha's property. Now, we all want every wedding to be perfect, right? That's all of our ultimate goals. But when it's at Martha's house, it needs to be really perfect. And trust me, the conversations in my head were out of control. But I put my big girl pants on. I told myself that I was worthy of this opportunity, even though maybe I didn't fully believe it, that I was going to do a great job. Martha and her team were going to love me. And they did. I mean, talk about the ultimate imposter syndrome. It's me standing up here on this engaged stage. Honesty moment. I've always felt a tiny bit like an outsider at Engage. I've been to Engage 10 times, but I'm on the fashion side of things. I'm not a planner, I'm a, not a photographer, I'm in that 38% that came, just came up up there. 
And when Engage used to do their book by business, it was, it was categorized by business category, I literally fell into the other category. <laughs> I've spoken at Engage before, but in breakout formats. And I was speaking in Cayman, Seafire. I did a talk on selling. And Catherine came to me. We were chatting. And she told me that I belonged up here on the main stage. And I told her it was never, ever going to happen. What was that? That was fear talking. That was me thinking that I wasn't good enough or smart enough to be up here. That was a me being afraid of being judged. But here I am. The thing is, no matter what level we are in our business, that imposter syndrome can creep in. And I've found that the more that you're looked at as an expert, the harder it can be, the more isolating it can be. Because if you're the one that everyone's looking to for guidance, what are you supposed to do when you don't know what to do or where to go, right? How many of you have more ideas between your shower and your first cup of coffee in the morning than most people? <laughs> Probably all of you because we're all overachievers. But then how many of you have your next thought, which is, I don't know how to do that. I don't know if I can do that. Well, it happens to the best of us. What I've learned is that not knowing how is not a reason not to do something. I'm a stylist, and I've had the opportunity to style photo shoots all around the world many of which were collaborations with Carla tonight. Where is she? Photographer that we all know and love. Yay. And um, planner Candace Coppola. And um, we were doing a photo shoot together. I was on my way to a photo shoot, and I had this idea that I wanted to write a book. And I wanted us to take our work that we had collaborated on and create an inspirational coffee table book for couples with tangible planning tips and inspiration in the way of our images. And I got to the shoot and I was like, you guys, I have this idea. Told them my idea and they were so excited. And then the fear crept in. because so we looked at each other and said, how the hell do you write a book? Well, we figured it out. It started with a lot of research. We took it one step at a time. Started with a lot of research through a friend of ours who had published his own book. He introduced us, we bypassed the agent, we went directly to his publisher. We presented them with our book proposal. They loved it and they published it. Fast forward five years later and we've written two books together. It all started, oh thanks. It all started with an idea and then an action plan then finding someone who believed in us, but the key was we had to believe in it in ourselves. We're often stuck in our own way of thinking. Call it limiting beliefs. I've come to learn that we can't be limited by our limiting beliefs. I, like you guys, am an entrepreneur. So despite the fear that I've experienced, I'm always thinking about what's the next, what's the new. I drive myself a little bit crazy. I have a passion for styling brides, as you just saw, but I've also found a love for education and teaching, and I decided to combine those things together and create a company called Beth Chapman Styling and Consulting. In the styling arm of the company, I style editorial photo shoots, and I provide day of wedding dressing service to brides. And in the consulting arm of the company, I mentor bridal store owners on how to run a successful and profitable bridal store. But once again, when I had the idea to launch this business, I actually had the idea here at Engage, I started to get overwhelmed. I was excited about it first, and then I started to get overwhelmed because I thought that in order to, to launch this new business, I had to let go of my bridal store. I had to let go of the white dress by the shore in order to launch Beth Chapman Styling and Consulting. And I was mourning the loss of my store before I even launched my new company. So what did I do? I did what a lot of people do when you feel like you're in a life crisis. I hired a life coach. And she helped me to figure out how to end those limiting beliefs. 
She helped me to, to realize that I could and should, should utilize the white dress as a springboard to launch Beth Chapman Styling and Consulting. The success of one business could parlay into another business. One business's success could lead to the other. Something, starting something new doesn't always mean that we have to give up something else. <laughs> they say that some of our best lessons are learned from our parents. This is one that my stepfather has told me my entire life. Around 2015, the retail aspect of the wedding industry turned upside down. Every retailer under the sun started selling wedding gowns. Brick and mortar competition increased and bridal retail online took off. And many of our own designers started selling online as well. So basically, we were all just competing against each other. And it was really frustrating. And it was scary. And after I took a minute, took a deep breath, I realized that I had a choice. I could either leave the industry or I could lead the industry. I could be one of those people who bitched and moaned about what was going on, or I could lead the industry and do something to change it. So I chose to lead. But of course, with leading comes fear. Am I smart enough to lead others? Is anyone gonna listen? Am I actually just gonna be helping my competitors to succeed? Will I be judged for putting myself out there? But I had to put the fear aside. It could no longer be about competition. It had to be about community and raising up our businesses and each other so that we could not only survive, but thrive. I believe that if we could each elevate our individual businesses, that we could elevate the industry as a whole. Through my consulting, I saw a need for a support system for other independent bridal store owners. So I created a forum called the White Dress Society. The reaction was overwhelming, because guess what? It turns out everybody was scared. So many bridal stores were feeling the exact same way that I was, but they thought that they were the only ones out there that were struggling. Our tagline for the society is Ask, Speak, Share. And through our independent Facebook forum and our retreat that we do once a year, we empower each other and we're truly stronger together. So my question to you guys is, what can we do, all of us in this room, to be stronger together? I would like to do a little exercise. It's going to take some audience participation. So I hope you'll bear with me. I want you to take out your notebook. Your, your handy little notebook that was on your chair, open it to a blank page, get out your pen, and I want you to write down, first thing that comes in your head, I want you to write down something that's holding you back. I want you to write down the one fear that's weighing you down. It can be personal, it can be professional. First thing that pops in your head, just write it down. And I'm going to give credit to this little exercise to my dear friend Mary Morantz. Okay. Did you write it down? OK, this is where the audience participation comes in. I want you to hold it up over your head towards me. Nobody can see it. It's going to be facing me. Straight up. Perfect. Great. Awesome. This is fear. Fear is ingrained in entrepreneurship. It's like an old program that's always running in the background. Keep them up. This is also a great exercise for your arms so we're out in our bathing suits. <laughs> We're going to look so good. <laughs> fear is just a storyline. Fear attracts more fear. It might be something that we're used to, but it's not serving us well. That fear that you're holding up right now, it's heavy. It's heavy, isn't it? We need to let it go. It's weighing us down. It's holding us back. OK, you can put your arm down. Are you happy? <laughs> you can turn that page. Nobody needs to see what you wrote down. But while you're here this week, I want you to lean into that fear a little bit. I want you to sit with that fear that you wrote down and think about it a little bit. That fear might be financial. 
It might be the fear of going into debt or being in debt. It might be the fear of raising your prices, which is something we always talk about here, right? It might have something to do with your employees. It might be the fear of telling one of your associates that they're not doing a good job. Or it might be the fear of being realistic with yourself that you can no longer afford that employee. It might be the fear of starting a new business or a new aspect of your business. It might be the fear of being here and engage and meeting new people. Fear is not a bad thing. It comes from a place of wanting to succeed. And we all want to succeed. But sometimes there's fears that stand in our way that feel like they're halting our success. They feel like that mountain that we're trying to climb. But here's the thing. When you put the fear aside, opportunities are going to present themselves. In each of the 10 previous times that I have attended Engage, I was inspired. And certainly inspiration came from people who were standing up here on this stage. But I have to tell you that some of my biggest, most influential moments came from meeting people in the bathroom line in between sessions or during a grab-and-go lunch when I chose to sit with people that I didn't already know, or in the beautiful blue Cayman Ocean when I was clinging to a fellow attendee that I just met because I was petrified of those crazy stingrays. <laughs> <laughs> Don't discount that person sitting next to you or that person behind you because they're not up here on this stage. No matter what level we are in our business, whether you made a $500,000 profit last year or you had a $50,000 $50, loss, everybody in this room is exceptional. And we all have fear. The thing that we just learned from that exercise is it's a great equalizer. It's something that we've all had at some point in our lives or at some point in our career and clearly, as we just saw, everybody in this room has fear right now. But you know what? We are all amazing. We're all innovators in our industry, and that's why we're here. Fear is just a storyline. Fear attracts more fear. It may be what we're used to, but it is not serving us well. Many of the people that I rely on most to get me through moments of fear, whether it's personal, which you'll hear about in my breakout session with Beth on Wednesday, or professional, are part of the Engage family, and many of them are in this room right now. Hashtag because of Engage is not just a hashtag. Because of Engage, I wrote two books. Because of Engage, I styled two national ad campaigns with a bridesmaid designer. Because of Engage, I started my second company. Because of Engage, I styled the fall fashion story and cover for The Knot. Because of Engage, I was not only able to develop the relationships that helped me to do those things, but I was able to overcome the fear that I had to do them. Each of us has a story. Each of us has an idea brewing inside of ourselves that we're too afraid to pursue. We have to listen to each other. We have to learn from each other. We have to support each other. While you're here, create your own hashtag because of Engage Story. The reality is, fear is going to creep in. It's human nature. It's part of who we are as entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are all about ideas. But anybody can have an idea, right? The idea is the easy part. It's the execution that's hard. It's what you do with that idea that makes you an entrepreneur. And it's the entrepreneurs that can lean into the fear and come up with an action plan to achieve their goals that are the successful ones. Use the fear. Dance with the fear. Use the fear to climb that mountain of doubt. Believe in yourself. Here's the thing. 
in order to eat the elephant, we have to do it one bite at a time. It's okay to be afraid. This is my final lesson to you. Be afraid, but do it anyway. Thanks.